outcome based education. Today, what we will do? We will do what is that outcome based education and I will teach you the OBE pyramid, mainly the four principles of OBE. Now, before starting the outcome based education, it is better to learn what is education. Education is the process of facilitating learning or the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs and habits according to the Wikipedia. Here the main component here is learning rather than the acquisition of knowledge. Now, let us come to some philosophical question. In life, which is more important, destination or journey? Playing well in a game or winning the game, which one is important? Enjoying a storybook or just finish the storybook? Studying it or giving exam? So, nowadays what we notice that the students, they just do not want to come to the class. So, some questions always in the teacher's mind that are my students learning? What are they learning? How well are they learning? What affects their learning? And how much have they learned? So, all these questions the teachers think and so the priority of teaching you know the priority now it moves to the learning rather than the teaching. So, the main focus is on the outcome based learning. Now, quality of education system judge from three perspective. What is the one? The inputs to the system, what happens within the system and the outputs from the system. The inputs to the system mainly focus on the finances, resources and the infrastructure of the institution. And what happens within the system? Processes used to organize, control and deliver education and the training and outputs of the system is the products and the result of education. So, the output is very, very important. Outcome based education, it emphasize on measuring outcome rather than the inputs and each educational agency is, is responsible for setting its own outcomes. So, in that case, according to the SPADI, the definition is focusing and organizing an educational system around what is essential for all students to able to do. The do component is very important, able to do successfully at the end of their learning experiences. This means, starting with a clear picture of what is important for the students to be able to do and then organizing the curriculum, instruction and assessment to make sure they, this learning ultimately happens. So, different views of OB is a, as a theory of education, as a systematic structure for education, as a classroom practice and William Spaddy is regarded as the OBE's leading advocate, a paradigm pioneer. The conventional model mainly we three things that you know questions that what do I need to teach learner according to the conventional thing and how are they going to learn this concept and how am I going to assess this their learning. So, here the main component is the content what the content and after that what the learning thing right. So, in that case in the old educational approach the learners are the passive learners what the teachers are teaching the learners they are passive learners they are listening. So, and it is mainly the exam driven and whatever they have to the teachers they follow some textbook and when they are follow the textbook the main importance you know to cover the textbook. So, it is in the 
not the, the breadth thing, but not the depth of the topic. So, mainly it is focusing to the rote learning. That means, the teachers, uh, the students, the learners, they are memorize something and give the exam. So, it is the rote learning type. Syllabus, that is why it is content based and broken down into subjects. Textbook bound, that I already measured and the teacher centers, whatever when we were in our child uh, at that time, whatever my teachers is teaching, because we do not have any other option, you know, just to listen the teachers things and we take the notes and give the exam. Sometimes we go to the library and take the reference book, but we do not have any internet facility. So, we cannot compare that the suppose in NPTEL lectures or this is the for the MOOC lectures, I learn something you know that, but that is absent at that time. So, it is totally a textbook bound and teacher centered and syllabus that was is rigid and it is non negotiable. Teachers are only responsible for learning. Motivation depends upon the personality of the teachers. Some teachers, they are excellent teachers, still you know it is in our mind that how good that teacher is. Emphasis on teachers hopes to achieve. Content plays into rigid time frame. In this time frame, I have to complete this course. Curriculum development process is not open to the public comment. Nowadays, you know, in the uh, suppose in the MOOC, if you are giving the lectures, the public comment is there that we have to cater or do you have to know, okay, and in that way we can improve our teaching method or teaching uh, lectures. So, but at that time it was absent. So, the focus of attention is now outcome based model. Outcome based model means it is totally what will learners able to do. So, the do component is very important. That means, the able what that is the skill set, what they know, knowing thing is important, but the thing is that where they where they can do it, what they can apply it or can they analysis it, that is very important. So, here and how can we assess the ability to do it? and what content do we need to teach for learners to demonstrate their learning. So, in that case, the thing is that it is the flip, the content it comes later. So, what the learner will do it comes first and then comp and each learners are different, some are deep learner, some are surface learner. According to that, how they will teach, they can decide on the and they can learn on their own pace. So, the new educational approach you it is a active learners, it is not passive, the learner becomes active. Learners are assessed on an ongoing basis, after the uh, class some discussion they and that the flip teaching is also there. They learn from the internet various sources and then in the class, they can come and they can discuss. So, learners are assessed on ongoing basis. So, there is a scope for critical thinking, reasoning, reflection and action. They can, they can analyze it, they can synthesize the content and integration of knowledge learning relevant and con and connected to the real life situation. So, no, how if they know the subject and if they can apply it or can they analyze this, they then only they can solve the real life problem. So, it is a lecture centered, lecturer here is the facilitator, they constantly. So, the lecture center here they constantly uses the group work, team work, they can do the lecturer will give them, the teachers will give them the case studies and if they can solve the case studies, in that case it is, it is easy for them to learn this you know in, on an in the whole life they can learn this one. 
emphasis is on outcomes that the what the learner do. Flexible time frames allow, allow learners to work at their own pace. When they have time, they can see the content and they can learn on their own. So, flexible time is a good is a important thing. Comment and inputs from the wider community is encouraged. Of course, if we get the comment and inputs from the community, then only the teachers also we can improve ourselves. Outcomes will be assessed in different ways and an ongoing basis, not you know after only the mid sum or in the end sum. You know, end sum. Always you know the outcome it, it will assist every day in the discussion method, case study method like that if we discuss then the outcome it will be already assessed every day. Assessment is the integral part of the whole system. Students will not get the marks just for remembering the subject content, not for the rote learning. Students will get the mark if they can analyze it or some creative thing or can they apply it, then only they can get the marks. So, from the teacher's point of view, we have to change our perspective. So, different aspects of learners abilities such as creativity and critical thinking will be also be assessed. So, students should think you know critical thinking that is really very important. So, the outcome based approach the first the teacher have to identify or the student also that what is the desired outcome. The teacher have to identify that this is the desired outcome from this class, I want this. If the desired outcome is fixed, then it is easy to decide the strategies and the methodologies to achieve those outcome. So, there is a link between this, this uh, identifying desired outcome and the deciding the strategies and methodologies. There is an another component that is the determining assessment measures for achievement of outcome of course. So, whatever the strategy and whatever the methodology the teacher is using comp with that they can uh, give the assessment thing. So, if the teacher think that my objective is to give application up I will teach up to application level. In that case the assessment also should be up to application level not analysis or th synthesis level. So, there is a relation that this is identifying the and if the assessment is measures are uh, you know from there it will go to the desired. So, there is a link between the assessment and the desired outcome. So, the main thing is outcome based education and it is that education which anchored and focused on outcomes. So, it is an approach to planning, delivering and evaluating instruction that requires administrators, teachers and students to focus their attention and efforts on the desired result of education result that are expressed in terms of individual student learning. Here individual student learning each students are different. So, it focus the outcome based education focus to the individual learner and there should be a marriage between the uh, industry and the academics and only the outcome based education can solve this problem because whatever the industry they want that thing the academics if it is match then only their total development of the learner. Because if they know the learner knows uh, in the uh, they learn something, but if they cannot apply it in the industry there is no use. So, the objectives of OB is focus on the students not to the teacher. Students demonstrate what they know 
and able to do at the end of their learning experiences. So, outcome or learning results that we want student to demonstrate at the end of significant learning experiences, they are not values, beliefs, attitudes or psychological states of mind. Outcome are what learners are actually do with what they know and have learned. They are the tangible application of what has been learned. So, here this is the picture of butter chicken masala. If you know only the recipe of the butter chicken masala, you learnt it, but you cannot make the butter chicken masala, then there is no use. So, the outcome is to make the butter chicken masala. Suppose, you have a driving license, but you cannot drive the car, you cannot drive the car properly, then there is no use. The outcome is you have to drive the car. If you have a learning license, it does not imply that the you are a you can drive it, right. So, you uh, that is why the outcome to drive the car is very important. So, the definition of outcome is according to Butler clear learning results that learners have to demonstrate what learners can actually do with what they know and have learned. Actions, products, performance that embody and reflect a learner's competence in using content, information, ideas and tools successfully according to Gezer and according to Spadi, culmination demonstration of learning not curriculum content. So, the learning not the curriculum content. So, features of the current outcome based education approach is it is need driven. What is that? Curricula are designed in terms of the knowledge skills attitudes expected from the graduates and aims to equip students for a lifelong learning. That means, they can learn the on the you know that the whole life all the curricula it is such designed in such a way, so that in the life they can apply. It is outcome driven. The model has a line that runs from taking cognizance of training needs to setting in aim the purpose of the program, goals for the syllabus things, the learning outcome and finally, assessing and learning out comes in terms of learning objectives. In the next lecture, I will explain what is these goals, learning of, uh, outcome as learning objectives, various things. So, the, but the main thing is it is outcome thing. What is the learning outcome? That is the main features. Third is it is a design down approach. What is that? It links to the needs and the purpose of the program. Learning content is only selected after the desired outcome have been specified. If the desired outcome is specified according to that, you know the content or these things we have to learn. So, content becomes it is just a vehicle to achieve the desired learning outcomes, which are aimed at including a basis for lifelong learning. The fourth component is it specifies outcomes and level of outcomes. Learning objectives are described in terms of blooms, cognitive, affective and psychomotor domains and set according to Megas guidelines for formulating the objectives. In the blooms things, there are knowledge level, comprehension level, application level, analysis level, synthesis level and evaluation level from the cognitive point of view. So, in which level where you know that where is important that is whether the learner can go to the analysis level or in the synthesis or they can create it or they can you know justify anything that is really very important. So, and the outcome based education only help the learner to get into that step. So, the focus it shifts from teaching to learning. 
The model has a student centered learning approach where the lecturers act as a facilitator, but study guides help the learners to organize their learning activities and group work, continuous assessment and self assessment are major features. And the framework is a total is holistic in outcomes focus means although the learning objectives are aimed at learning at grassroots levels, they are linked to the goals and aims at higher level. So, attaining learning objectives attaining in the analysis synthesis in this level is therefore, not an end it itself, it provides a building blocks for achieving you know higher level outcome. The main thing is to go to the higher level outcome. Now, this is a OBE pyramid by SPADI, in this OBE outcome based education pyramid, there is one paradigm two purposes, three premises, four principles and five practices. Now, what is the OBE 1 paradigm? The paradigm is shapes decision making and patterns of concrete action. The viewpoint is what and the whether students learn successfully is more important than when and how they learn something. When they are learning depends on the learner, how, how they are learning that is also depends on the learner, but what they are learning and whether they are learning is not that is important. The OB has two purposes, what ensuring that all students are equipped with the knowledge, competence and qualities needed to be successful after they exit the educational system, after whether they success it or not. Structuring and operating schools, so that those outcome can be believed and maximized for all students. That means, the basic philosophy is success for all students and staff. So, in a nutshell, two purposes commit this system to focus. One is the future performance abilities. In the future, whatever they are learning in the student life, in the future how much they can perform, future performance abilities of the students and establish a success oriented way of operating. And OB has three premises, all students can learn and succeed, but not at the same day in the same way. Some are very very you know in the class only they learn very quickly, but some they have they have they may take two days like that, but they learn. The main thing is all students can learn and succeed, but not the same day that the teacher as a teacher we have to remember that. Successful learning promotes even more successful learning, if the learner is successful you know that only encourage them to be more successful learning. So, as a teacher it is always it is a good to motivate the learners, so that they can you know learn more successfully. Schools only control the conditions that directly affect successful school learning. So, three premises are there in the outcome based education. OB has four principles, one is the clarity of focus, expanded opportunity, high expectation and design down. Clarity of focus on culminating outcomes of signal, it is better you know clarity of focus helps educators establish a clear picture of the learning they want students to know, understand and be able to do. That means, the teacher should know these things my learner should learn. In other words, teacher should focus on helping student to develop the knowledge, it is teacher's work to help them to develop their knowledge, to develop their skills and not only skills their personalities. That will enable them to achieve the intended outcome 
that have been clearly articulated. So, the focus, the clarity of the focus, it should be the focus is the for the teacher's point, it is really the clarity should be there. So, the student success, the top priority for instructional planning and student assessment. So, the clarity of focus learners may require different instructional strategies and additional learning opportunities. Most students can achieve high standards if they are given appropriate opportunities. So, that means, we have to give the appropriate opportunities to the learners. So, that it becomes you know it moves from the teacher centered to the student centered approach. Five key dimensions of the opportunity time, methods and modalities, operation principles, performance standards, curriculum access and structuring. Time, teaching time, the amount of access and direct support for learning, the system offers students. Learning time, the amount of time the system gives student before telling them it is too late to learn. The, okay, in this uh, topic, in two days at least you have to learn. So, that is the learning time eligibility, the window of time the system allows for students to learn particular curriculum components. So, from an OBE perspective, all three dimensions can be expanded greatly beyond the traditional system constraint to ensure that the students learn successfully. So, these form can be enhanced in three ways mainly the duration of learning opportunities, the frequency of those opportunities and the precise timing of when those opportunities can occur. Methods and modalities, several methods and instructional modalities could expand opportunities for successful learning, we will explain that. Operational principles, opportunity for learning success will expand enormously if teachers apply these principles consistently systematically, creatively and simultaneously in the classroom. So, the teacher have a very great responsibility that the how they to you know to motivate the learners. Performance standards, criterion based system is clearly defined and apply same standard for all students not you know few students for all students if they use the criterion based approach and impose no limits of how many students can reach in given performance level. So, this kind of standard system is the key to enable all students to succeed eventually. The last component is the curriculum access and structuring that is student access to significant curriculum resources and to how those curricular experiences are structured. High expectation, it means that teachers should establish high challenging standard of performance in order to encourage students to engage deeply what they are learning. So, the expectation should be high, then only they can achieve. So, helping and the teacher's job, job is to helping the students to achieve that high standards. So, it is linked very closely with the idea that successful learning promotes more successful learning. So, key dimensions of high stand expectation raising students of acceptable performance, eliminating success quotas that means, if the teacher thinks in my class 5 students are very intelligent rest of that is no, no we have to the eliminate that is all can do very good. So, the outcome based learning promote that. Increasing access to high level curriculum, then only they can go to the high level curriculum. So, high expectation for all to succeed. Most students can, can achieve high standards if they are given appropriate opportunities. Then only most of the students we feel that they can achieve high standards. Designing down the last thing it means that the curriculum design must start with the clear intended outcome The students are to be achieved by the end of the program. Once this has been done 
all instructional decisions are then made to ensure achieve the desired result. So, designing down means curriculum begin and exit with outcome, outcome, but followed by the building blocks is nothing but the learning. So, the designing is three broad categories, uh, categories culminating, enabling and discrete. Culminating outcome defined what the system wants all students to be able to do when their official learning experiences are complete. Enabling outcomes are the key building blocks on which those culminating outcomes depends. They are truly essential to the students ultimate performance success. So, that is the enabling outcome. The last one is discrete outcome a difficult in details that it is nice to know, but not essential to a students culminating outcomes. So, in the next day I will teach you all the aims, mission, vision and learning outcome and learning objectives of the outcome based model. Thank you.